YouTubers. Welcome back to AZ to Ozarks. Today I'm out in the greenhouse with the celery and you can see that some of the celery is kind of getting past its prime. It's starting to yellow and even brown at some places. That may be partly because I planted it really densely and that may be partly because we are in July and it's now getting quite warm. So we've been harvesting a little bit as we go um, eating it. However, now I think we are going to take the whole lot of it and we are going to preserve it. The two methods we'll be using are freezing and um, dehydrating. So we want to be able to continue enjoying this celery as it does not last very long in the refrigerator. It loses its crispness and kind of gets wilty. So we want to make sure that we can continue enjoying it even though it is time to harvest. So I have my best guy on the job here and he's going to be helping me harvest and then we will be back inside the kitchen to process it. So we kind of grab one bunch by itself and cut it below the surface and put it in our storage bin. Oh. You want this one? Now that we're back inside, the first order of business is cleaning up the celery. So there's some mud and debris left and you want to make sure to rinse off any insects that might be in there since we are organic gardening and there's definitely some grasshoppers and things out there. So I just use a colander in my sink with cool running water to clean these guys up. The first method of preserving that I will be using is freezing. And so to do this, it's very simple. You simply slice them into little pieces and um, freeze them. For easier portioning, it looks like I'm going to have to rinse these in the colander after they're cut too. Um, for easy portioning, I'm going to use a one cup measuring cup and place them into Ziploc bags for freezing in one cup portion sizes. And then from there, I will put all of those into a one gallon freezer bag. You can see I'm pulling out the shorter stems and the leaves here. And then just simply freeze them like this. I won't be parboiling or anything else, but this makes your celery pre-chopped and really convenient and ready for you when you're going to be making a recipe in the future for something such as a stir fry, a casserole, or any other use where you would use diced celery. Here I have the celery diced in what I would consider a normal size for freezing, but here are the celery that I will be drying in the oven. And I slice them extremely thinly. This is so that they can dry out much quicker and you don't want them to retain moisture. To dehydrate in the oven, you spread out the celery that's thinly sliced into a single layer on a parchment lined baking sheet. You will use the dehydrate function on your oven. If you don't have one, put it to the very lowest setting that you have, which is probably about 130 degrees. And it will take several hours. Um, this took me about four and a half hours to get them completely dried out. 
while some of the celery is beginning to dehydrate in the oven, I will be portioning this celery into one cup serving size into sandwich bags. This is for freezing. I feel like one cup size is the perfect size for our family, but you can use whichever size is convenient for you. Before placing the bags into the freezer, I will make sure that they're all kind of flattened out so they can freeze quickly and evenly. And then once they are frozen, I will combine them into a large one gallon freezer bag, but this will help them freeze um, much more quickly if we put them into the freezer nice and flat. Now you've got all these little scraps and leaves. What to do with them? Well, into the compost pile we go. And the chickens actually come over here and scratch around and pick out what they want and eat what they want. But it is in fact raining today, so they're all hiding in the coop like chickens. While the celery is dehydrating in the oven, you'll want to kind of toss it around a couple times periodically to make sure it dries evenly. After nearly four hours, the celery is looking very nice and dehydrated. It's light, it's crisp, and you can see it has dramatically shrunk in size. So I'm going to pull it out. Now the celery that was placed in the freezer has frozen, so I will combine all of these bags into one large a uh, freezer safe Ziploc bag. And the celery that was put into the oven to dehydrate is all dried out and ready. You can see that this is a much smaller way of storing the celery. So dehydrating definitely has that advantage and you can store it in a plastic bag or I like to store it in a glass jar. Whenever you're using a recipe, you just throw it in. This is best for things like soups where it can reconstitute in liquid. This is better when using in a recipe where it will essentially be like eating fresh celery in a stir fry or a casserole or a pan dinner. So these are my two ways of storing celery. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to keep following our adventure. It's raining and I noticed all the chickens were over in the coop so I came to just check on their feed situation and um, that is not a chicken and neither is that or that or that or them. My goodness, all the goats came into the chicken coop during the rain.